haven't seen it, you've unseen it. Unseen Radio. You're listening to Badge Music Review Corner on Unseen Radio. Hello everyone, you're locked into Unseen Radio. My name's Ben Edge from the Bass Music Blog and you're listening to the Review Corner. Should we get started then? We've got three songs to review today. The first of one is by a band called Lakeshore Avenue and it's called Heart on Loan. Question, tell me what you think about this. It's stiff on the right, tears on the wall, so no need to tell me that, that we are already, already, already through. on loan there by Lakeshore Avenue. It's free! We love our free music here on the Unseen Radio Review Corner. From their EP, Every Good Intention, you can find that on soundcloud.com forward slash Lakeshore Avenue and download it because it's free and we love free. Right, we're here on the Unseen Radio Review Corner and we want to know what today's two guests think of that. We've got two returning guests, they've both been on before. It's Rich and Clinton from the Royal and Gate and Joe Payne from the Enid. How are the two of you? I'm good, I'm good. I, I, 
I was better before I listened to that, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm great. I'm better for listening for that. Good. That's the sort yeah. of thing you want to hear. Right, who wants to start? Let's start with kindness. Let's start with... <laughs> <laughs> How do you know who's going to be kind? Well, you said you were I might have been in a really low place. Y- you could have. But no, I, uh, I like that. I like a bit of soft rock. It reminds me of my, uh, my sound house days. You can imagine being there, sweat dripping on your head. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. Like the vocals, uh, quite easy listening. Could have it in the car, driving to work. Uh, but yeah, it sort of reminded me of uh, an American teen drama or movie, and the sort of montage of people running towards each other, and a, a story of requented love. I want to go on to the second song now because I could relay into it perfectly on the mm. the idea of that. But Joe, we'll go to you next. Well, I know what Richard means because it's very nine oh two I know, isn't it? Ooh, I just I just said uh, what was the Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I was only able to talk about Come Dine With Me last time. That's, that was it. <laughs> and prog. Lots of prog. Oh, yeah, I mean, we had a lot of prog talk, didn't we? Yeah. Because of, um, yeah, because of 72% Morrissey. I'm out with uh, quite, yeah. Joe and Joel from... No, Joe and Josh from 72% Morrissey shortly after that at the other Labour Club. And Joe was kind of saying to me, yeah, it amazes me that you kind of learn more about the people reviewing it than you do... If you just said, oh, prog, 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 and the other guy went, Nirvana, Nirvana, Nirvana. After listening to that, uh, all I can really say about it is what era it sort of reminds me of, which is was when I was about, must have been about 11, 12 years old, and, um, you know, you kind of had all the skater boys, everyone was getting into skating, and skate parks were popping up everywhere, and baggy jeans, and everyone else was listening to Blink-182, and uh, I was sort of, Still listening to steps and stuff like that, so yeah, changing friend circles. <laughs> so that's what that reminds me of. That's what that you music, take music them reminds me of. Step CD around the skate park, can you? Um, yeah, if I wanted to get beaten up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with steps? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with steps. Mm. I went to see them at the O2 wow. on their recent tour. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> they all shaping up. Uh, one of them's. A different shape. <laughs> like the name of a boy band. Different shape. Different shape. Oh yeah, that'd be good. They could be like the runners up in X Factor, couldn't they? <laughs> we should start it right now. Do you think we could different, be different shape. shape? Yeah, different if you just shape. ditch the rest of the Enid. Mm. Yeah, Richard. What, what do you want to be on different shape? We could be. It'd be like the Spice Girls, where you've got like sporty spice, scary spice. You know, you could be like round shape, square so peg shape. Think? Triangle shape. Oblong. <laughs> <laughs> which do you want to be? What shape would you... If you could be any shape, which would it be and why? Well, I would be a star shape, because uh, obviously I'd be the lead singer. Richard, what would you be? I'd be like a dodecahedron. What, what like, would you be? I'd be a square, because I'm a square. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, don't put yourself down. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> speaking of squares, let's go into Tracy Matthews. This is the Tracy Matthews Band. You can find this on tracymatthewsband.co.uk. A fantastic website because it's got words that I've written on it. Sweet. So if Quote you, Ben Edge. If you've made a website and you haven't quoted me, just do it and it'll make it infinite times better. If, if, if you reviewed the Enid, I'd so quote you on there. Fantastic. So I've got a little quote section at the side. I'll do that. Right next to Classic Rock magazine. and straight away Uh, what do you want me to say about the Enid well it's not what I want you to say you should be you know being honest fantastic band I love them right there you go you can see that one yay thanks it's the Tracy (laughs) Tracy Matthews band and their new single it's called I Will Run To You put your hand in my hand rest your head no one else in the world so there's no second best wear your heart on my sleeve as you lie down next to me we don't know what tomorrow brings so we'll just wait and see as we search in the stars trying our best to find the answers no it can't be that far in a world of second chances I will search
Tracy Matthews and her band, the Tracy Matthews band. I always get a bit worried when you sort of have band names like that. Do you think the kind of the rest of the band get a bit jealous? They sort of all resent. I hope I haven't opened like a big can of worms by saying that now. Mm. They're all going to come out of secretly and hated her for calling it. Well, maybe I don't know. Am I, st- am I stirring up rumours? No, no, it's a good point. Um, Northampton. My my first band was called Tramp Etiquette, and all of all of my school friends would um, openly joke to to the others in the band oh you should rename it Joe Payne and the Trumpets <laughs> and they were really offended and it you know it wasn't allowed to be um, talked about it was, they were quite sensitive to that yeah. so uh, yeah it's definitely definitely a sore point <laughs> thing to some people Joe Payne and the Trumpets so why wouldn't you qualify as a trumpet well I think uh, you know it's, it's a trumpet you know it's, it's a bit like um, Dan Ross and the Supremes isn't it it sounds a bit like that so a, a trumpet is a sort of a good term for a backing mm. vocalist or something, doesn't it? Something to bounce on, isn't it? Something, to, yeah. A trumpet. Oh yeah, we could, we could have, we could have actually pushed ourselves more as a dance band. I think <laughs> if we'd have gone more of a dubstepy route, then that would have been quite appropriate, maybe. And play on trumpets. Yeah. Oh yeah. You'd have to be really well. You'd become pretty fit Ooh. doing that, actually. Some people don't look good on trampolines, though, do they? What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Offended. think I, I don't think I was talking to you, um, well, about you or anything. I'd be interested right. to see at, at, at what point. <laughs> <laughs> what point you, well, I'm going to call myself myself, and I'm going to call you like the band, and we're all going to be fine with that. Or did she just go? I would sound better if I had a band. So I'm just going to pull some people together. Mind you, there's some local artists that they, they've kind of made an arrangement um, where they, there is a band and then there's a solo artist and then they've decided to come together um, because the solo artist needs a band for their shows. And so, so like John Martin and his Italian divorce, I think are an example of that. And I know Sean Grant and the Wolfgang. The Wolfgang are a separate entity to Sean Grant completely. But they it's a very good together. So perhaps it's that kind of thing. Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Mm-hmm. They were both separate band. Yeah. Maybe she maybe it should have gone for sort of like the Gold Street Band or the <laughs> Abington Street Band. It'd have a nice ring to yeah. it rather than just the band. It's quite lazy, isn't it? 
I think it's the Tracy Matthews band. So. Called it after herself. Yeah, that's that's what we've been talking about for the past. <laughs> I tell, I tell <laughs> you what, it's not like talking about yourself in Tracy. Oh, I think Tracy Matthews. Can you think in the there. Richie Clinton band? No. No. You're not. You're not thinking of called Richie. I'm quite altruistic. I'd... Richard Clinton's make, Royal make a band name up of letters from everyone's name. Oh no, that's, yeah. that's the worst. E-I-O. Think, there's there's an example that really annoys me actually. Um, it's sort of the same thing. Abba. There was a there was a this is this is talking <laughs> prog again now. But I'm sorry, it's my world. There was this band called Asia, and no, in some no, no. form this band is still going, but it's a singer called John Payne who is no relation of mine, but he's renamed it Asia featuring John Payne. And so he kind of carries on like doing this thing as if he sort of inherited the brand of Asia, but then stuck his name, tagged his name on it. And I, and I saw, it caught my eye because his name is so similar to mine. And I thought, what if people think we're the same person? I'm gonna have to be able to, so I put a thing on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> to say that we weren't related and then he obviously had been searching his name on Twitter and found it <laughs> and uh, tweeted me back and I felt like a bit of a dick what did he tweet back? We'll it was Saki but I was Saki myself so you know it really. lowest form of wit it is <laughs> but you get a lot of that in terms of uh, some of the bands of yesteryear and like two members have just decided to leave and then two members have carry on, but they carry on with the name. Mm. But I mean, the Enid's like that. But it's not the Enid featuring Joe Payne. <laughs> then you get all those legal wrangles that announce the tour and they go, you can't call yourself Jerry and the Pacemakers. Yeah, like who was it that asked to happen to? Is it the Spice? No, the Sugar Babes. The Sugar babe. Babes. Sugar Babes, yeah. Yeah. And that's quite I amazing. was wondering if you, you were going to mention that because you <laughs> Joe would have loved it and I thought I thought he's not going to say sugar babes surely not because ben, ben, cool ben is way too cool for the sugar babes um, and then you did I only listened to good Charlotte <laughs> and sugar babes came on my iPod today actually <laughs> it was good enjoy it it was a good day it's so interesting though the sugar babes thing because I I think that the people that were in that band at the end had more right to the name than the original members did because each of those original members had left out of their own greed because they decided they were beyond the band and wanted to have a solo career and so like you know for them to then because it was Mitya Buena who fought for it and you know I was kind of like how dare she do that because she been chose crazy. to leave the band and she's got a major attitude problem and she's a really lazy cow. <laughs> Tracy Matthews, then. I will run to you. OK, well, I at first I was um, a bit cynical to it. Um, and, and as it went on, they, they've, they've sort of done well to... The, the, obviously, what they've created was the thing they were going for. And so, for that reason, I can't really knock it. It's not to my taste. But I would say that she's got quite a nice voice, but she has a real problem with with her pitch and like that that's like quite a normal thing and if you were performing live you would really get away with a, vo a vocal performance like the one she did on the record but you know it's a recording you know you just gotta do a little bit of pitch shifting a bit of bit of fortitude no, no one would even notice it if you just touched up the odd note here and there where it particularly stands out like it would make the world a difference because every time there was a flat note I just couldn't help but cringe so yeah, it's not against the rules to cheat a little bit. <laughs> Cheating is not against the rules, ladies and gents. <laughs> that just, really just that, kid. <laughs> Richard, um, what did you think? It wasn't really my cup of tea, um, and I didn't think it was that great either. What is your cup of tea? Coffee. <laughs> milk, <laughs> one <sugar. laughs> milk, one milk, one sugar. One milk, one sugar. I thought the, the band were quite good. Uh, uh, pretty, without hearing a live on that, you'd say the vocals were quite poor. Uh, I didn't enjoy the lyrics at all. It was just a bit... 
didn't take me anywhere. I don't feel changed by listening to it. No, I have to agree, actually. It didn't make me feel anything at all. That is a shame. At least, at least the, the last track made me feel a bit nostalgic. Oh, God, I, ha- I had to mention, why did she change accent in the middle of the song? What was that? Because that, re- that was really weird. I'd that, forgotten that. That made me re-engage with the track, so it was quite useful. Yeah, it did make it did make us stop and listen because it was just a strange thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who was it that sang "Ironic"? Nope. It's like rain on a wedding day. And Lars Morrison. Uh, oh, yeah, it was yeah. like she was trying to do a bit of that. Well, she was at the Durngate the other night. Oh, was she? Yeah, was she? yeah, yeah. She's really good. It's always hard to to rate a track on its own because you do wonder what they're they're like live and a one track in isolation it's, it's, yeah, it's always difficult can we I, just stop the show here call them up <laughs> get them to come in Hello. and do a set for us yeah. put them on speakerphone and, yeah they can yeah. do it down there and then we can review it after that and if yeah. they're you know all of it's rubbish we'll just do it yeah and if actually it turns out that this is kind of their worst song even though it's their debut single yeah. it's their debut single it is apparently oh, I I think, think, oh they've probably got a lot of development to do then. Mm. I think you know. I don't know. I think well, you it's could say it's promising for their for their first single. That's actually quite a promising thing. Mm. Here is a new solo artist. They're new to the town. They've just moved. They've asked me to help them. Where have they moved from? I, I'm not. I think they might have moved from either London or Berkshire. Ooh, a mystery. Maybe they moved here just so they could get on this show. <laughs> and yeah, and they're going back out tomorrow. To yeah. But if if they are from, I remember reading somewhere London. But it doesn't. It doesn't seem like the sort of place you'd move to. Maybe the vocals and the accent will give us a clue. Maybe they will. Is, is there a Northampton accent? Yeah. Mm. Is there? Have you never been to the market? Oh, well, I can't really hear. All people. I mean, none of us really have. That wasn't yeah. pear. That worse because you come from Tring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely have a Tring accent because it's really posh. This is Luke Roberts, aka Hey Sleeper. This is also free from his Gone for Ten Fingers EP. Because you don't have ten fingers, you've got eight fingers, two thumbs. Who only wants ten fingers? He does. Greedy. Maybe he doesn't lose thumbs, but opposable thumbs are actually a great mechanism that, you know, if people like humans and apes have evolved. So, you know, if you, if you don't have thumbs, you can't do anything. You couldn't play cards. Which is the name of the song? It's called Playing Cards. You can get it for free, as I've said, because I do love music that is free. But I do appreciate that, you know, times are tough. So if Tracy Matthews and your band, you have to charge a bit for your singles. Richard's like, oh no, <laughs> well, you wouldn't you wouldn't pay for that one and get the other one for free. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. It was clearly. I, I can your read thought. your face. <laughs> it's it's nothing good. compared to the face you were pulling when it was actually playing, though. God. <laughs> <laughs> You can still see should, the, uh, this is why you should film these lies <laughs> you can still see actually the pile of vomit in the corner <laughs> <laughs> so unfair to her <laughs> promising this is Hey Sleeper it's called Playing Cards If I could be bold, I'd have a job Hosting the millionaires who come here for the sun Lived on the beach for a couple of weeks Now we tread cautiously in case we're still Drifting 
playing cards like Polaroids, comparing memories. You're making accusations like you're one of them. Buried under snowdrifts or dressed in dinner suits and ties, we sell ourselves another pack of lies. If I had more faith, I'd be afraid that we were wasting all this precious time you say If we stood just here for a couple of days, we'd be talking cheap. I'd be wondering. Where your old heart lives Now you're drifting From a hay sleeper, a.k.a. Luke Roberts, that's his real name, new, new, newly moved to Northampton, from his Gone for Ten Fingers EP, that was the song Playing Cards. You can get that for free from Bandcamp, I do believe, and we'll ask our guests what we think of that. We've gone to Joe last time, so Richard, we're coming back to you. We've got Richard Clinton on today's show, he's from the Royal and Zone Gate, and we've got Joe Payne from the Enid. Both of them have been on the show before, so obviously they, they know what they're talking about. Richard, what do you think? Shut me up. Quite enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I was, yeah. would have actually liked it to go on for a bit longer. Uh, well, it was a whole EP. Yeah, I'll get, get the rest of this. We'll be having a look and downloading it for free. Yeah, for Even free. Even better, it's for free. Um, it, I really liked the the lyrics. Really, quite loved his voice. Is I was sort of a, bit, a little bit mesmerised by it all. It sort of like someone was actually talking to me, which sort of captivated me in that way. Um, anything I think later was was the claps. I think just just wipe them out. It was one, one was a little bit, it's like he'd recorded a couple and one was just a little bit duller and deader than the other. As I either do big claps, loud claps, or no claps. Should we, should we give some claps for him to sample? Or, like the good old fanzine, blank stairs and cricket claps. You could have had those Cricket claps. claps. Yeah. What's a cricket clap? It's a very polite clap, isn't it? Oh, right. That's a, I've never heard that before. It's that. Mm. I can never clap properly at gigs because I've always got a drink in my hand. And so you do the plastic. I, I do the sort of like yeah. tap the can thing. <laughs> the other clap you can do with a drink mm. is you can do the the thigh clap. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A good, good one. So you clap your thighs so cause especially when you've got a full. Mm. I guess it depends if you've got yeah, a full you don't drink want to or not. Spill it. Yeah, if you've got and a full that, drink, you do the thigh clap. I usually compensate by mm. giving a proper like. Like do do that kind of thing. Don't do it with your shaking hands. Cause <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, sure. You like Can you do a, a big there. wool with with steady hands? Um, Give it a go. Oh god, it feels really like weird. Like you, yeah. You want to have your? Well, I, I would always have this one hand free. Great radio, so, everyone. You know, like a Chris Akabusi. Oh yeah. Ooga. One of those. It's when you just knock someone out behind you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is interesting. Claps at gigs. Because uh, the James Blake one went to Oxford, and there's this right mixture of, and I'm trying, there were rowers there in their rowing uniforms from the university, I imagine. Then lots of gentrified Guardian readers. Then students and myself. And it was just a really interesting vibe, a complete mix. Mm. I always enjoy going to Oxford for gigs because it's just. But the claps, you had some really thuddy claps and then yeah. some very sort of cricket like claps. It was, what are you saying about a, Guardian readers? They want a spectrum of claps. They are. They've got a different clap. They haven't got the clap, but they've got a different clap. What's the clap? It's a STI. Not for this show. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. We <laughs> could talk about it. <laughs> See, if that, if that song, if I'd, if I'd heard that at a gig. Yeah, if 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 I was just at you, you kind of like average gig where you have like a kind of like four band four different bands playing and there's always an acoustic act or whatever. If the track was like that, chances are most of the audience would have been 
chatting all the way through it. Not and then and then they would have done the polite clap at the end. Anything more you want to say about Hey Sleeper? I, I think it was actually pretty good. I thought it was the best the best song today. Best song today, would you agree, Richard? Um, or would you say Lakeshore Avenue? I, Tracy Matthews in a band. I I think they're very close, but I would download Lakeshore Avenue first. If I was to run home now, the one I'd be most keen to download would be Lakeshore Avenue. I just really enjoyed it. It's, it's been quite a while since I've had to listen to sort of soft rock, and it does, it brings back lots of happy memories, and I think it was it was great. I got quite immersed in it. On that note, I'd like to thank our two guests for this evening. We've had Richard Clinton from the Royal and Gate. Thank you very much for coming, sir. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, it's all right. Go to the Royal, go to the Gate, go to the Errol Flynn film house. Come to them all. Yeah. Fun for all. Have a night on the town, you know. Theatrical brilliance. Bit of culture. Yeah, exactly. And also Joe Payne from the Enid. Join us again next week. We'll be here on the Unseen Radio podcast. We'll have three more songs and a handful more guests of local personalities here from this fine town of Northampton ready to discuss and be opinionated and do all the fine things that they like to do. This has been the Review Corner. I've been Ben Edge. Over and out.